extent of reaction, definition and application to systems consisting of one or more process units. The concept of extent of reaction is very useful and frequently used in chemical engineering for solving mass and energy balances involving reactive systems. First we will look at what the extent of reaction is and then we will apply this concept to systems involving one or more process units. The extent of reaction is the number of moles or molar flow rate reacted of the component in the reaction equation having stoichiometric coefficient 1. When we say moles reacted we mean moles consumed or moles formed. It's always a positive quantity. Let's begin by considering the following example. Imagine that you have a closed reaction vessel in which a reversible reaction is taking place. You should be familiar with the following from secondary school chemistry. This table shows the initial and final situations. The first row describes the initial situation and shows the number of moles in the vessel before reaction. There are 100 moles of nitrogen, 150 moles of hydrogen and 10 moles of ammonia initially. After reaction and according to the reaction stoichiometry, the final situation will correspond to the second row of the table. Of nitrogen there will remain the initial 100 moles minus 1 times the amount denoted by X which has reacted. Of hydrogen, the other reactant, there will remain 150 moles minus 3 times the same amount X. Of ammonia, the product of the reaction, new molecules will be formed. So the 10 moles of ammonia initially present increases by twice the amount X. Actually, X is just the extent of reaction and is a numerical quantity with units. In this case, X is measured in moles. Let's look at the definition of extent of reaction again. It is the number of moles reactant of the component in the reaction equation having stoichiometric coefficient 1. The concept of extent of reaction is widely used in chemical engineering and unfortunately does not have a unique symbol. So every book and every lecturer will most likely use a different one to denote this quantity. In this series of videos, the extent of reaction will be denoted by the Greek letter xi. We now consider two similar but rather different situations. The first one, at the top, is that of a closed reactor in which a batch process is taking place. It shows the number of moles present in the initial state as well as in the final state. The latter has been calculated from the extent of reaction and the stoichiometric coefficients. In this situation, the extent of reaction xi has units of moles. The second situation, the one at the bottom, is that of an open system in which a continuous reactive process is taking place. Above the input arrow is shown the individual input molar flow rates expressed in moles a second. Above the output arrow is shown the in individual output molar flow rates of the same components after the reactor. The extent of reaction in the second situation will have moles a second as units. Another very important situation arises in the case of some simultaneous reactions, where each reaction has associated with it its own extent of reaction, i.e. If there are two reactions taking place at the same time, there will be two extents of reaction. If there are three reactions, there will be three extents of reaction, and so on. Let's see this applied for the particular situation shown. Let's imagine that in this continuous reactor, there are three reactions taking place. A materials balance on each component of the system where the reactor is fed 100 moles second of ethane will give us, as shown, the output molar flow rates as a function of the three extents of reaction and their stoichiometric coefficients. We now deal with writing mass balances for systems consisting of several units using the concept of extent of reaction. We apply it for the example shown. Carbon dioxide and hydrogen are the fresh feed to this process, stream A. This stream is combined with the recycle stream, stream R, and the resulting stream, B, is fed to the reactor. The reactor produces methanol and water, but, as can be seen, not all the reactants are consumed and some, so some will remain left over. This is the reason for placing a separation unit after the reactor. The separation unit will split the stream in two, stream D containing methanol and water, and stream R containing the leftover reactants, carbon dioxide and hydrogen, that obviously will be fed back to the reactor so that they don't end up being discharged. We first write a material balance on each component over the reactor in order to practice using the concept of extent of reaction. The material balance on carbon dioxide reads moles a second of carbon dioxide leaving the reactor equals moles a second of carbon dioxide entering the reactor 
minus moles a second reacted. In this case, one times the extent of reaction. Solving for xi, we find that the extent of reaction equals 25 moles a second. Doing the same for hydrogen, we obtain the equations shown. Solving for xi, we obtain the ex exactly the same value for the extent of reaction, 25 moles a second. The same material balance over the reactor, but on methanol, takes us yet again to the same conclusion. The extent of reaction is 25 moles a second. Finally, a material balance on water over the reactor will give us the exact same result. In summary, the value of the extent of reaction can be obtained from a material balance over the reactor on any of the components participating in the reaction. We do the material balance on that component using the information available to us. It does not matter whether the balance is done on a reactant or a product. The only requirement to properly apply the material balances is to take into account the reaction stoichiometry. We once more write a material balance on each component using the concept of extent of reaction, but this time taking as control volume the whole system. This control volume should be understood as being equivalent to a single process unit. The material balance on carbon dioxide will read moles a second of carbon dioxide leaving the system equals moles a second of carbon dioxide entering the system minus moles a second reacted. In this case, one times the extent of reaction. Solving for xi, we again obtain the result that the extent of reaction equals 25 moles a second. It is the exact same value that was obtained after doing a balance over only the reactor. Applying the same material balance on hydrogen again gives us a value of 25 moles a second for the extent of reaction. Likewise, the same material balance applied on methanol will give us 25 moles a second for the extent of reaction. And finally, a material balance on water will give us the exact same result. In conclusion, what we are trying to emphasize is that the value of the extent of reaction will be the same regardless of how it has been obtained, by a mass balance over the reactor or by a mass balance over the whole system. The extent of reaction is the number of moles reacted, either consumed or formed, and this happens only in the reactor. Some students have difficulty in understanding this concept. A useful, a helpful analogy follows. Imagine that you are cooking three sausages in a frying pan in your kitchen. How many sausages are being cooked in the frying pan? The answer is three. How many sausages are being cooked in the kitchen? The answer is again three. And how many sausages are being cooked in the house? The answer still is three. Even though we are considering a larger control volume each time, the number of cooked sausages is the same, three, since the cooking process takes place only in the frying pan. The same reason, reasoning can be applied to the number of moles a second reacted in, the, in a reactor. What is the extent of reaction in the reactor? 25 moles a second. And what is the extent of reaction when the whole system is taken as the control volume? 25 moles a second, since the reaction only happens in one place, the reactor.